What time is it? Show time! <laughs>
Yeah, it's apparently their views, so I don't know. Let anyway, know. <laughs> um, favorite questions or rapid fire questions, I should say. Uh, favorite comic book character? Oh, that, that's easy, Batman. Okay, uh, and I know you're you're not anti Batman. You like Batman, I but, like, but yeah. you like his protege. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Nightwing fan all day. Absolutely. <laughs> favorite band? <laughs> uh, wow. Um, the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just pick them. I don't know any. Uh, oh, uh, Christian or not Christian? Whatever you're feeling, man. I'll, can I can I give two answers? Yes, yeah, yeah. sure. Okay, uh, Christian probably, and I've been listening to him again recently. Is is TFK Thousand Foot Crutch? Okay. Um, so I, I like I like to rock. Yeah. Um, when I actually <laughs> listen to music, sure. Um, which is I, I guess prefaces for the n- <laughs> the second part of the answer. <laughs> uh, my favorite. <laughs> I was going to say real band. It's not a real band. Uh, Weird Al Yankovic. Mm. Mm. <laughs> okay. That's a choice, man. That's that is a choice. And and there you, you go. It. That's Matthew Stevens. There right? you go. Look, he is, he's brilliant. You can ride white underrated. nerdy if you want to. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, um, we actually did a student life night uh, lip sync battle, and I lip synced the, the white and nerdy Dang here on this wow. stage. Yeah. All right. That. Well, let's uh, keep track. It's with okay. That. I think there's a video, but uh, <laughs> I have done what I can to scrub that from existence. Yeah. I mean, that's half a student ministry, right? Yep. <laughs> just trying to scrub things, <laughs> any evidence <laughs> that you did it both from the senior pastor and from social media. Yep. You try and just fill it with all the new memories. So no one remembers <laughs> the thing you did last week. <laughs> oh, that's too real. Uh, favorite beetle? Beetle. Um, you know what? I'm going to go underrated Ringo. Everyone hates Ringo. I'm going to go Ringo. Okay. Why? Because um, everyone hates him, probably because everyone hates him. And I, <laughs> look, course. I'm an includer, so like yeah. I, that's that's you part feel bad for. Him. I feel bad for him. Okay, and I don't know if he was any good or not. I'm not a huge Beatles fan. Yeah, um, but that's uh, the second Ringo answer, isn't well, it? Well, I think no, last time favorite, I asked though. least favorite, and he said, um, uh, so yeah, I just went the other direction okay. this time. So, so Matthew, yeah, so Josh didn't yeah. like him, and Matthew does just Josh, because he feels bad Josh for Josh and I have to fight now. Is that what that means? Absolutely. That's the next episode. My least to the death. Celebrity death match. Yeah, my least favorite would Minister be John Lennon because yeah. he broke him up. Student he factor. broke up the band that I never listened <laughs> I mean, to, and I'm still mad at whatever. I mean, that's technically Yoko, but whatever, sure. Whoa. He made a choice. Hey, well, you just you just mentioned choices. <laughs> he made a choice, <laughs> that's true. and he chose her versus them. Fair enough. All right, cool. Uh, so feel like we got got you guys warmed up a little bit now. Yeah, Not Morgan. that Matthew needed it, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think Morgan has a favorite comic book character. I do. Do you? <laughs> I, I do. Uh, that's my question. Do you? Uh, that's no, apparently a not. No. Who's your favorite well, um, anime? I do. Oh yes. Okay. Yes. Like now you're speaking my language. <laughs> Sailor Moon. <laughs> all day. Fair enough. Yeah. I right. knew you had Moon I Prism like, Power. I was like, what into it. Like, I was I thinking maybe it you had a comic. Book. It's like apparently coming back. Like Target yeah. has had several Sailor Moon shirts, yeah. and I've had to resist every single. Like what urge. a Anime is hard to kill. What a I mean, shame. it's just real. Anime so is hard to kill. When Have an anime takes, it kind of <laughs> drops for a minute, but it'll tick back up every time. Speaking of losing people, I've walked in from work uh, some afternoons, and she'll be watching it. Because so it good. came to, like, Hulu or something like Hulu. that. Nice. Yeah. And uh, she lost it. Like, all right, well, I, ne- I guess I need to leave now. <laughs> okay, well, bye. <laughs> There's no room for me and Sailor Moon in this room. That's funny. Fair enough. All right, so who gets to go first with this one? Um, I think – I think uh, – Morgan should go first. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. So, Morgan, in two sentences, <gasps> two describe sentences. Matthew. Okay. First of all, two sentences. Y'all understand <laughs> the restraint <laughs> you've put me under. Yes. I will use my first sentence to say that there is literally nobody on this planet <laughs> Quite like Matthew Stevens, and if you know him, oh, there is a you snowflake. You know and it's me. that to be true. Okay, <laughs> he is an extrovert to the highest degree. He is goofy and yet can be incredibly serious. He is also incredibly like strong but also will cry at things easier than i will on um, wow wow on air you, you just got out of air that on air just you just that got out there. i may cry now <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying teary on every single parenthood episode and i would look i'm like oh, gosh you good <laughs> you, you really <laughs> big deal <laughs> i just get really sweaty in the eyes that's <laughs> okay and he is the best girl dad i mean Aww. i'm sure he would have been a great dad to a boy as well but there's just something about matthew 
and being a girl dad mm. like it is very good it is fun to watch <laughs> i just sit back and watch <laughs> i like it that uh, that yeah. all felt fair, very accurate yes, yes. I, I did catch a hint of there's no more kids coming mixed in there a little oh, bit he man. would have probably made a good boy dad <laughs> but we ain't going through hey, that again I mean, are we gonna roll the dice and have a third girl third wedding that is <laughs> oh man there you go I'm thinking about some tears yep. i'm gonna be a blubbering wow. mess. absolutely yeah. i cried at our wedding yeah hey me too bro so Knock did it up. Tyler. yeah yep. right there I blame my mom. See, and that was me. Um, Our wedding, I was like, nope. I have cried frequently through the engagement. I have my makeup done. I am not <laughs> shedding a tear today. And lo and behold, I didn't. Morgan, I didn't cry. Morgan you cried in the car, and it, uh, no one else was around. Really upset me at that point. You <laughs> cried on stage. Because I cried on stage. In the middle of our Man, house. mine was a little different. So Morgan is good. Like, she can control her emotions. Like, uh, you remember, uh, what, what's the, the movie, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs? Like, the um, oh, yeah, Terry Crews character, the cop, and, mm-hmm. you know, he's got he a tear sucks. coming down. He's like, not today. And, you know, sucks it back up. <laughs> Back in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. She can control. I, I'm I'm a full extrovert and I'm full emotions. And I do what I can to to be in, in positive, but like man, I, I, I can be full emotions sometimes. And so uh picture this. Um we uh, we were going to take pictures before the ceremony, so um, that meant that I was going to see Morgan before and, you know, the whole tradition thing. So what we decided to do was set up this moment where she was on stage and I was going to walk in blindfolded into the gathering space, um, or that's not the exchange, the sanctuary, <laughs> and I was going to be led down the aisle blindfolded and then uh, someone was going to lift the blindfold and Morgan was going to be there in all of her radiant glory, the camera person was going to take pictures right before all that happened, which is an emotional moment in and of itself. Sure. My entire crew of groomsmen and ushers and uh, father-in-law all gathered around me, laid hands on me and prayed. And like, they prayed me up. So like super (laughs) spiritually emotional at that point too. And then I walk out and it's just me and it's Morgan and I see her and she is looking good and I lose it. Like, there's a picture of me just, like, bawling, like, uh, at the end of Old Yeller. And so, I mean. Well, okay. Yeah. Not, to, not, to, you know, not to compare her to Old Yeller. Um, but, I mean, I was just sitting there. I was bawling. And it's all on film. Like, come on. Like, we couldn't get some better, you know, manly or masculine pictures. But, no. I, uh, I let loose and, and cried. But I didn't after that point. Like, we, we got on stage. and We did our thing. All the emotion. Not gone, but. Uh, no more tears. I cried into the mic on stage in front of everyone, <laughs> and I wish I could claim all the the things you threw out there. We were playing ultimate frisbee in the sanctuary <laughs> um, right beforehand. Change was so, a little different. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No. So no. y'all met y'all met in 2013. Y'all got married in 2014, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I locked and her boom. down quick. Yeah, A did. day after our one year anniversary. Nice. Oh wow. Yeah. So that was quick. That was very quick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not not like. Well, and no, yeah. yeah. I mean, I not, mean, it's like, cliche, crazy. but like when you know, you know. Exactly. I mean, it just, yeah. I mean, it's crazy yeah. that it worked yeah. out that way. I knew, and I wanted to make sure I got her before she knew differently. <laughs> <laughs> she knew other things. Yeah. She, she might change her mind. Let's go ahead and lock her in. Yep. <laughs> that makes sense. All right, Matthew. Morgan in two sentences. All right, so <laughs> different from Morgan's two sentences. Like, okay, how do I describe this weird man in only two sentences? <laughs> uh, mine is, how do I only speak in two sentences? Uh, so I'm going to interpret Runnels. it as two minutes. Uh, no, oh I did. I, I actually I had to write mine down so that I could stay sort of controlled or within the parameters. Um, I will say I I did not come through, but I did use a lot of semicolons. So I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. <laughs> um, let's see. So uh, I what I say is like we're brick and mortar, where I'm the brick and she's the mortar. I try and provide and protect, but she puts them all in the right places and holds it together. And so thank you for that. Um, otherwise, it would just be a pile of stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then I also tried to go Disney. I said, we're Anna and Hans. And Hans before he turns out to be evil, for anyone who's watched Frozen right. 1. Uh, because I finish all of her sandwiches. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally, and I love crazy. Oh, no, just kidding. No, I'm, I'm going to hear about that going home. I'm just kidding. Uh, no, actually, I'm probably more Olaf anyway, oblivious and carefree and a <laughs> bit of a goofball is what you said. Uh, silly to a fault. <laughs> and then I went serious. I tried to go serious, try to, to, to do the, what I needed to do. Like, let's see. She is where I want to be. 
She's fiercely loyal, convicted, and willing to speak up. A planner, which I need desperately. <laughs> spiritually deep and adept. Gorgeous inside and out. And has the most recognizable and contagious laugh. Oh, my gosh. That's one sentence. That's very good. My second sentence. Oh, my <laughs> word. <laughs> which is weird because I'm a rule follower. Yeah. To, uh, well, uh, I, we I, won't get into that. I enforce that. other people to follow we rules. We won't get into that. Yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah. Oh, he bends man. every rule to meet his rule. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of live life like a lawyer. Like we've I need played to board games with you. We know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I need to know the rules so I need so I can flex uh, where I need to. Uh, let's see. She uh, oh, she's the the little puzzle piece to my big. Mm-hmm. Uh, we see things and do things differently, but God has made us fit together in all of the best ways. Yeah. Oh, so sweet. Aww. Yeah, so originally we had the question two minutes, but we know when two people love each other very much that they can't keep it in two minutes. And mm. um, that's why I changed it, Tyler. Mm. I, I didn't get to tell you that. But that's okay. I love to hear these ex- explanations of each other because you, um, it's just so sweet. And then like just being friends with y'all, like I, I can be like, that's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, but, uh, what was I going to say? I forgot. Oh, the puzzle piece. Yeah, y'all's puzzle piece. Y'all have tattooed rings. Yeah, everyone uh, looking yeah. to your everyone looking to your phone screen right yeah, now. Yeah, totally <laughs> see throw it. A picture. Uh, uh, more, you want to sh- uh, share? So, like when we were dating, we always just said that like we fit together like puzzle pieces. Even when we would hug, it was like we just fit together. And so, which is funny if you don't know Matthew and Morgan, <laughs> right? Yeah, he's literally <laughs> a foot taller than me. I like fit right into him. Um, and so, um, we I called him my big puzzle piece, and he called me his little puzzle piece. And even on um, my engagement ring, which he custom did. There is like a little puzzle piece off to the side. Yeah, if you look into your phone, you can see it. Uh, I'm happy to share that. And so for our one-year anniversary, we went and got wedding ring tattoos. That was always something that I wanted to do. It was going to be my first tattoo. And if you've known me at all, like I had been itching for a tattoo since I was 18, but I held off. (laughs) And my first tattoo was um, my wedding ring tattoo. And it has our initials, which are the same, MS. With a puzzle piece beside it. So we have identical matching tattoos. And that was Matthew's one and only tattoo. And he's good. And I'm like, come on, let's go. (laughs) Only for love would I do something like this. Where Morgan will get on after this is done, Morgan. We'll get some more. Like, I'm down at any point in time to get another tattoo. Uh, It gets expensive. That's really what holds me back. You need a moon. Yeah, for sure. Luna, I need a magnolia mm. and a rose for Margo. Like your brother. All right, so Morgan's brother, he's a he's a tattoo fiend. Yes, uh, he he's is. He's got this like special artist uh, in what Nashville or yeah. something like that, and he goes to and uh, he's actually got our children tattooed on him, uh, and I don't, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> he is my. In fact, he I think he was going <laughs> I think he was going today for another one. He took off work today because that was the only day he could get in with her. Her books were closed. Oh wow! And so he took off to go to Nashville. And he's getting Margot's tattoo today. So mm. that's that wild. Is, yeah, commitment right there. Like he is dedicated an arm. Yeah. It also has like stuff from my dad and my yeah. mom on it too. So he's, he's like, a really, you gotta he's a really leave good room uncle. if you ever have your own children. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, he's got children. another arm, right? Yeah, exactly. That's so, so funny. That's what wild. a dedicated and committed uncle. Right. Yeah. He's the best. He is good. He's really, really good. Shout out to Hunter. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Well, Morgan, you are a 4K teacher. Yes. Um, Is that what you call it, 4K? I say K4, pre-K4, yeah. Preschool. I mean, I guess it depends on who you're talking to. People that don't have young children or, like, you know, are older, uh, they're like, what is K4? I'm like, pre-K4, so I teach four-year-olds. Right. Yeah. Right, four-year-olds. Yes. Well, that makes you a saint, first of all. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Do not yes. want that, but you feel <laughs> called to that. So yes. So tell me a little bit about what, why you feel called to that. Okay, well, um, I went to college, and I had the goal of jur- – uh, journalism. I'd watch The Hills and watch Lauren Conrad like go and intern at um, L or whatever it was, Teen Vogue. I can't remember. Um, and so that was what I envisioned. Like I enjoyed writing, and so that's what I wanted to do. And I learned very quickly that that's not what journalism actually is. <laughs> that is like the like expectate like that's the exception, not the rule. And so I was like, I don't feel like this is my fit. So what am I going to do? And as a college kid, I went back home for the summer, and I got—I had always helped out in vacation Bible school at my home church. 
And so this was my first year that I was going to get to be a teacher instead of just like a youth helping an adult since I was technically an adult, a college <laughs> student. So I was like, oh, cool. I wonder what grade they're going to put me in. They had so many workers that had four-year-old children that they opened up a four-year-old room basically for the, their volunteers' children. Wow. And they're like, we are going to put you with the four-year-olds. And I literally was like, what have I done? Like, why? I'm so like, sorry. Why, who hates me? Like, this is my first <laughs> What do you, do, what do, you do with four-year-olds? I mean, I, I was, don't know. I was like, this is going to be the longest week of my life. Like, I'm, I, I almost want to back out, but I'm not going to. And by, the, by Friday afternoon, I was so sad that I was Aww. not going to get to see these four-year-olds every day. And so I immediately went to the course catalog, looked at, like, the programs of study at my school, which was University of North Alabama. And sure enough, child development just, like, ding, it was, like, highlighted on the page. And when I learned that that meant I could work and teach preschool, I was like, that's it. Wow. I'm done. And so it's just been on since then. Um, and I've learned since then that that's not everyone's uh, cup of tea. It is my happy place. You know, three-year-olds, they're cool. And I, re- I really do enjoy five-year-olds. But there's something about the age four that, that that's just, that is, that is my happy place. I just love working with them. That's awesome. I didn't know that story, and I love that. Yeah. It's like one, one summer at VBS. That's pretty cool. It's also very specific. Like, yeah. if I was, I was called to 27 year olds, like, that, like that's my <laughs> like pigeonhole me in. Got them. Yeah. And uh, I love to hear you talk about how four year olds learn and how you teach a four year old. And it just blows my mind. Um, the things that you know and the things that you do with four year olds. So I've always enjoyed hearing your stories. And um, I always like what you say about the difference between four year olds <laughs> and teenagers. Um, teenagers know better. But four-year-olds have to be taught. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So and that's what... Do the they f- know better? <laughs> it's debatable. Oh, they're told. Oh, I look at them and I'm like, okay, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> My four-year-olds know we're not supposed to do this. So you know we're not supposed to do this. But what is so cool about like K-4, here you are, they're about to go to kindergarten. And that's when like their school career is just going to launch. But I get to help form that foundation, those building blocks that they're literally going to take with them the rest of their life through school. And it's not even just about making sure they know all of their letters and numbers before kindergarten. It's also how they cope with their peers and the way we share and the way we treat our friends, talk to our friends, how we behave in the hall. I mean, those are like skills that they have to have for kindergarten and they will carry those you don't want to get a seven-year-old who's never been taught how to walk in line you know and so I get to be a part of that process and most importantly I get to teach them the fundamental truths about God Um, just how every story in the Bible is true and we treat our friends this way because it reflects the fruit of the spirit and what does that mean that God is all those things and so it's just so cool that I get to be a part of that and they take that with them. Even if they don't remember my name, if they don't remember my face, they'll remember those truths hidden in their heart and they'll take it with them for the rest of their lives. So uh, I just love it, y'all. Yeah. I, could, I could go on. <laughs> that and was awesome. I, I, tell, love yeah, no, I love seeing you or hearing you talk about <laughs> that. Um, you know, it was a couple of decades ago, everybody was rushing to student ministry because we were like, oh, that's that's the age. We got to get on there. We got to get mm. on there. And we started realizing, like, yes, yeah, super, super important to be in student live. Mm. But you've already missed yeah. out on, like, all of these years before it. And so now in the past decade, decade and a half, man, kids ministry yeah. has blown up and the attentionality mm. that has started going into it for that exact Absolutely. reason. It's going, oh, man, like maybe they are listening more than mm-hmm. we gave them credit for. Oh, they are. Yep. Yeah. And I, I, I try, as we're teaching stories of David and Goliath or, you know, Joseph or Daniel, I want to, by the end of the week, I want them to be able to tell me the story. So, mm-hmm. like, I'll ask comprehension questions. Because not, I'm not just telling you a story, telling you a story, you know, like, oh, this is fun, this is really cool. I want you to tell me, like, tell me, I'll ask questions like, you know, was Daniel afraid of Goliath? Why wasn't Daniel afraid? Because he knew this was God's fight, you know? And so I don't know, y'all. I could go on and on and on, but um, I just love getting their heads and their hearts involved in God's truth so young so that when they're bombarded as a teenager, 
they had that already put away and they can mm-hmm. pull that out. Um, and God will just continue to water that seed that I got to help plant. So I love it. Well, Matthew, uh, students are similar in that they have a tendency to smell. <laughs> and beyond that, um, I don't know what other things they have in common, but you, you feel called maybe not to a very specific age, but to an age range. Mm-hmm. So uh, tell me, you grew up a pastor's kid, so... I did. Always plan to be a pastor? Man, I, I got to shout out to Morgan. I, I don't know how to follow that. Oh, uh, a, amen. Great. Yeah, benediction and amen, right? Oh, right. Uh, absolutely. Whatever your sign off is on the <laughs> podcast, you can go ahead and hit that. Um, uh, oh, man. Uh, did I always plan to be a pastor or go into the ministry because I grew up a pastor's kid? No. Um, okay. And, and I won't say that I like ran from it. Um, I, I think my parents would vouch for me in this, that I was actually a good kid. Sure. Um, I didn't have the rebellious thing that you, you hear classically from MKs or PKs, um, <laughs> mainly because I was super scared of my dad. Right. Uh, and <laughs> he, he, uh, he set boundaries and kept them pretty tight. <laughs> and and, and, and uh, even though I'm now larger than him, if he tells me to do something, I say, yes, sir. You know, the whole you know, jump, yep. how high? Yep. Uh, yep. Still. Um, and so I, I respected my dad. I respected what he did. And, and I saw a man that did his job really well. Mm. Um, he, previous to like the first couple of little churches, you know, starting out in seminary, you know, kind of how we all do. Sure. Um, he was at a church for 20 years in Water mm. Valley. And then now he's been in Greenwood for 12 or 13 years. So okay. like his, you know, his last two 10 years have he's been, been there a minute. Yeah. And Partly because he, he does he's very competent at his, his job, but he also loves people and is intentional with them, and it's reciprocated. And so he's had longevity because he's built these relationships, and they've wanted to keep him around. Sure. Um, and so I, I respected what he did and how he did it. Um, and so as far as, like, forming the uh, – how to – be a good man, a good Christian, and even uh, be a good church person, um, I learned those skills. But as far as me going into that, I had people constantly, oh, you're going to grow up and be a pastor like your dad. You're going to grow up and do this. And uh, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Uh, My mom, also very involved in the church, I wanted to be more like her. She's working in the secular world, but still is very involved in the church and involved in her community. And I wanted to go more that route. Um, And so whenever someone would say, oh, you're going to be like your dad, I'm like, well, I want to be like my dad, but I don't want to do what he does. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I, you know, went to college and I had all these ideas like we all do, like Morgan, you're going to be a journalist. And uh, man, I I did a lot of uh, wild things. I, um, I shadowed a couple of different doctors and I was going to be a lawyer because I could argue and (laughs) use words. (laughs) Wow. Okay. Um, uh, I, um, I went in my first two years at Mississippi college um, were in the, the, the business school. I was double majoring in business admin and accounting and doing pretty well as far as schoolwork there, but realized because I am that extreme extrovert that Morgan uh, pointed out earlier, uh, by the way, on the um, Myers-Briggs, 98%. On wow. the E. Golly. Yeah. I, I, Tyler's head just hurt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you and I have the exact opposite, don't we? Yeah. You're uh, ES, uh, what is ESTJ. It? ENFP and you're the uh, ISTJ. Yeah. yeah. ISTJ. Yeah. There um, we go. Which is weird. May, are we puzzle pieces too? Maybe but back so. That's, <laughs> what, that's what works. Well, you and I are yeah. the same. Yeah. Oh, no opposite. wonder it works because yeah, yeah, yeah. you married you married one of us. I did. Oh. You're welcome. <laughs> one of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Colt. <laughs> Hey, it's an exclusive club. Uh, oh I think we're called gosh. the champions, so you're welcome. Oh, uh, man. You, you married a queen, so uh. what can I say? Uh, oh, <laughs> I have no idea where I was. Uh, oh, college, doing well, but realized I wanted to be around people. But I really enjoy the business side of things, and I wanted to be like this philanthropist. I'm going to make all this money, and I'm going to give back to the church and all these things. I, that's what I thought. It, sure. I'm a 19-year-old kid. <laughs> I, I don't know things. You think you know things. I don't know things. And I, I, I wanted to be around people, so I decided to shift to public relations. Uh, some of the classes kind of crossed over, and so I didn't have to start over completely in college because Mississippi College is kind of expensive. And Dad mm-hmm. said, you got four years, and you don't finish it in four years, it's on you. And I didn't have any money. So I decided to finish in four years, Good call. and and I finished in, in in PR, 
but something interesting happened in between the junior and senior year of my, my time there. As I was looking for master's programs all around the country, I'd lived in Mississippi all my life, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to branch out. I was looking in, like, Florida and Tennessee and Boston. Like, um, yes. I, and I know Boston's not a, a state, but, like, Boston. Like, that's, like, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so in that process, looking for a degree, uh, I started asking myself, because, you know, master's programs, you really have to kind of focus in on a thing that you're going to do and, and specialize in. And in that process of, of praying through, okay, what do I want to do? What does God want me to do? How am I going to use this for his kingdom? Because that was always part of the plan. I realized that I was going to have zero joy, zero contentment in that path. Mm -hmm. Which wow. was tough. That was a tough realization. Yeah. Because at that point, you're going into your senior year. You'd worked hard. I'd worked hard. I don't know about y'all. I worked hard in college. <laughs> um, Not a me. bit of a nerd. And C's so, get degrees. <laughs> preach. Oh, Tyler's man. And D's get degrees. Oh, man. <laughs> That's too. Never got a C in college. Um, I, I, I probably would have just self destructed if I'd have gotten a C Same. in college. Um, <laughs> But uh, that's, that's a whole other flaw for a different podcast. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking through, okay, well, what is it that you want me to do, God? And so I, I was praying, and I was seeking wise counsel, just like Scripture taught me to do, and quickly realized that all those times I said no thank you to ministry earlier in life is exactly what God was calling me to do. Hmm. And so I accepted that challenge i accepted that call and immediately things just started falling into place wow. it was really neat um, to see how god had orchestrated and set things up for me even when i was not pursuing those things um, and so shifted gears and finished my degree my, my senior year um, communications pr i mean sure that's you, you preach and you know okay. i thought eh, maybe i'll make it work um, and so I got an internship at First Clinton, just right across the street from MC, working with youth, and realized this is this is my jam. This is what I'm called to, and I have been in youth ministry of some some shape or form since I was 21, and so 34 now and 13 years. That's uh, pretty decent. I should retire next year. That, yeah, oh, yeah. Please. absolutely. <laughs> that that sounds like a thing you should definitely do. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, in that vein, I know for a lot of guys when they step into student ministry, it's often with this mindset of like it's it's kind of a jumping off. It's the starting point. Yeah. And like I'm looking to get to that next yeah. spot in church leadership. So you're shaking your head. That's not you. Man, I, I want to be careful here because there. I, I've even got friends and peers. Um, hopefully, none of you are listening to this. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> no, you we should want listen, to this. To listen to this. Okay, yeah, you're right. Listen to this, but maybe mute this part. Um, no, I, you know, it, it is. It, it can be a springboard into ministry, but I hate the idea that it's this entry level position mm. because it is not. And if you treat it as such, you are doing such a disservice to your people, your students, their families, your church. Yep. And guys, if you're out there, I'll just speak plainly. Can I speak plainly? Absolutely. Is this one of those podcasts? Yeah, it is. Yeah. All right. Uh, I won't use any violent language or anything, <laughs> expletives. No, I, I don't do that anyway. But um, guys, if you're out there and you're part of a ministry and, and it is, you're using it as a stepping stone, get out. <laughs> Um, if, if it is getting into ministry because you believe that you are a minister and that you can minister to any age at any time, God bless you. But if you're just doing a thing to build a resume to get to another thing, mm. no, that's not what this is. Like, take your calling seriously. Uh, and so, yeah, I, that rubs me wrong a little bit, sure. a bit of a soapbox. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know what the future holds for me. I, I don't know if, if I will go into another form of ministry or age range or type. Uh, because, I mean, your, your uh, pastorship is not age-based. Right. Um, you birthed to whatever. Yeah, <laughs> last day. Uh, yep. so, um, so, which is cool. Church, I think, has really uh, adjusted well in providing different styles of pastor titles and descriptions where uh, maybe one of the things that kind of held me back when I was in high school, it was, okay, you're, you're either the pastor, you're the music pastor. And even though that's what my dad is and, and is super musically talented, gave nothing to me, <laughs> still a little bitter. Um, 
I didn't want to preach Sundays. Um, I couldn't sing, even if I wanted to. Or it was like some sort of student or children's ministry. Yeah. Like those were kind of the classic options. But yep. now, you know, church has mm. really opened up. Yeah. And so who knows what's in the future. But right now, like I, I really do. Like I feel called as a youth pastor until I retire next year. Mm. Or <laughs> retire, oh or retire gosh, whenever, whenever that year is. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> like I, I do. Again, I, two daughters. You're not retiring <laughs> next year. <laughs> oh, that's right. Weddings. Um <laughs> Way down the road. So you Mary Rich, kids. That's <laughs> If you're listening to this 20 years down the road. And we're cutting that. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. Well, I think, like, um, bloom where you're planted. Like, that's kind of a, a, a silly saying that we say, but it's so true. But it's, it's more about is it a calling or is it a stepping stone? Mm. So if it's a calling, then you will um, bloom where you're planted. You will follow the Lord and... Um, reach all families. I mean, cause you reach more than just your students on Wednesday nights. Yeah. Yeah. You reach all the way to their homes. So try to try to. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, um, Morgan, let's talk wife of a minister to wife of a minister Ooh, here. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're going to take a quick breath. <laughs> break and we'll be right back after. Um, you, like no, your privacy, yeah. you know, I think we all kind of have our expectations or maybe even people have their, uh, expectations of what they think it would be like to be married to someone in ministry or even just to be in ministry together. Mm-hmm. Um, cause that's how we see it. We're, we're in this together with our husbands and, um, but, you know, with with this might come some unex, uh, I don't say uncertainties. Maybe like you don't know where you're going to go next. You don't know right. where you might get called next. Um, a lot of times it kind of falls to where the the minister, the pastor gets called. So, um, like, what has that been like for you? Because you know, being a 4K teacher, you can kind of go yeah wherever. But what's that been like? Well, first of all, I'd like to say I never in my life had imagined <laughs> that I'd be a pastor's wife. And if you had asked me even coming out of high school into college, which I met him my senior year of college, if you'd asked me, I would have like laughed in your face and probably <laughs> said something a little crude. Um, <laughs> but um, we've worked but, on her. We've worked on her. What was interesting, like that God obviously had a hand in that. I actually started dating a guy in college for most of my college career who was planning to go into ministry. He was like a youth intern and was working through that, um, trying to graduate so that way he could attend seminary. And there was a lot of conflict in that relationship because I didn't want to conform to that expectation yet of being like a minister's, even like girlfriend. I'm like, okay, whoop, like, hold on. You're like telling me what I can do, can't do. And so I immediately like pushed against that. But God really used that relationship to equip me and refine me to when I met Matthew, it was like, hey, guess what? No, you weren't going to be married to this person and minister with them, but I have, I used that to equip you and prepare you for the guy that you are going to do ministry with. And so, um, thankfully, I had never, um, when I was in college and even considering career and things like that, I had never had an idea of... I want to move here and I want to settle here and this is my plan and I want to live in this area. I, I mean, I honestly had no idea. Um, and that was the cool thing about pre-K is that that's a need at anywhere. So it's right. like, you know, I can just go wherever I want to, wherever there's a job possibility. And so as I met Matthew my senior year of college, during that time when we were dating, we were not quite engaged yet. He had just gotten called to a church in Monroe, Louisiana. We were doing long distance our entire relationship, but now he was like out of place. And so um, as we got engaged and then um, got married, I immediately, you know, started to find a job there and thankfully got plugged in like that first school year into a really, really awesome school, which was my first teaching experience coming out of college. And I learned so, so much that I've carried with me. And so as Matthew has been called different places, I thankfully have been blessed and been put in awesome schools. All four, this is my fourth school that I'm at now since graduating uh, seven years ago. And it's just been so cool even how God has used my experiences there to just even further equip me as a teacher because at all four different schools, we use four different curriculums and different personality of school Mm -hmm. and things like that. And so I feel more well-rounded as an educator because I'm like, oh, well, I can glean from this, this, and this. And um, 
you know, adjust my teaching style to take what I've learned at all these four places. But God really has blessed me in the places that we moved. I've been placed at really awesome schools that I've learned a lot from that have um, better equipped me as a K-4 teacher. That's awesome. So it's not just you're following Matthew around. No, no, but you're actually (laughs) um, growing and learning in your own career path and um, yeah. g- gaining a lot from it. it and when like. we, um, and we'll get to our story in a little bit, but when we actually moved to Pearl, I had the teaching job and he didn't have the ministry job yet. Right. And so, you know, God even provided in that way of, and I loved that, that school that I was able to yeah. work at. So yeah. Awesome. Well, that's cool. Um, I actually want to hear some more about that story and maybe dig into some of a specific part of that journey. Mm-hmm. But before we do that, we're going to take a quick little break. So we'll be back with you guys in a second. All right. So Matthew Morgan, we met you guys when we were getting ready to leave for Australia. Like literally, I think it was a week before we left. Yep. Um, met you guys on a Wednesday night where y'all came to Quitman where uh, I was wrapping up my time as youth pastor there. And so met you guys. I think you and I hung out the next day for a little bit just to kind of talk because that's not normally what happens in those kind of times. Typically somebody has already left Mm -hmm. and then somebody else comes in. So it was kind of cool to get to have that interaction. It's how we connected. Um, Mm -hmm. And so you guys got to Quitman. You bought a house. Y'all settled in, got ready to be there for a while. But life sometimes happens, and that didn't work out quite that way. And then you guys took and moved to Pearl because there was a church job that might potentially work out. And so <laughs> you had a uh, you got a grandmother who lives in Pearl, and w- she said, hey, I got a downstairs kind of one-room apartment. Y'all can move in, kind of get settled for a minute and figure out where you're going. <laughs> um, and so you guys came, and the church job didn't quite go as expected. Um, so tell me a little bit about that whole experience. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, how you were feeling, how that affected you guys spiritually, how you coped as a family. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, just tell me about the journey. Mm. Well, you know, when you become a Christian, life becomes easy and perfect. Yes. And yeah, yeah. The, the plan God has for you is this railroad track in which you can't veer to the left or right. Right. Yeah, we all know that as Christians. Mm. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Uh, so the truth is, <laughs> uh, we, uh, we, we got to Quitman, and I forgot that y'all had met Morgan that Wednesday night. Yeah. I, you know, because you and I, I kind of... the whole crew, man. The dogs came and everything. Yeah, that's true. Because they were running around in like the they were <laughs> in the kids' I playground don't area. Remember that? But yeah. I remember meeting you. Yes. Yeah, before children, we had uh, we actually had more pets, more than animals in the house people. than people. <laughs> uh, at one point, we had six animals in the house we had three dogs three cats i don't know why we were we became some sort of pet sanctuary (laughs) uh actually there was a a man when we were in monroe that showed up one night in the rain with this cat in a blanket and said we can't take care of him anymore i heard you have animals and can you and like just kind of shoved this cat in my arms and left (laughs) that's amazing (laughs) It turned out to be the worst set ever. So amazing. Bougie, I think that's what, like apparently seven hundred dollar cat. If there is, yeah, it was such like some thing. sort of lynx hybrid sort of thing. Whoa. Yeah, it was declawed in the front, but man, Burp. those back claws. Oof. It ripped through multiple shirts of mine because it he hated kicked, people yeah. or me. I'm not sure. And that's why they couldn't take care of that <laughs> cat anymore. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We, and, uh, they're probably not listening, but we ended up <laughs> selling the cat back to them <laughs> later on. <laughs> Y'all, yes. it is such a long we, story, but the daughter of the couple, she was she was a, <laughs> it had an apartment. They were washing the cat for her, and they got rid of it basically without really telling her. <laughs> no, I'm dead serious. And so I be- put the cat on Craigslist. Her friend saw the cat and said, I think someone is trying to sell your cat. And sure enough, it was her. It was the daughter. She reached out to us, and we got her to pay us $50 to get the cat back. <laughs> That might be my favorite story in human history. Like, just the entirety of human history. I think we can wrap the podcast up now. Y'all, um, you Because we were like, well, That's we had had wild. this other family, like, contact us. And we're coming within an hour to meet the cat. They had just lost theirs. No. And they were going to see if it was going to be a good fit. They wanted to bring their child. And so... 
we're waiting for them to come over and she's contacting us saying like, Hey, like, please don't sell him. Like <laughs> I, my parents got rid of him without like telling me I would, I, I really want him back. I was like, okay, well we have a family co- like coming within the right hour now. to meet him. Yeah. They're, to they're going to repay now. a homing fee of $50. And she's like, no, I'll bring $50 and I'll come right now and I'll come get him. And she did. And so I had to tell this family, like, there's been some really weird circumstances, but the original owner of the cat has actually come and purchased him back. And they were like, oh, okay, like, it's fine. Like, we understand. But it was wild. Amazing. It was like. Can you imagine that family that missed out? They're like, okay, that doesn't sound true at all. <laughs> Just cat. tell me that you don't want to sell me the cat. Right. Like, you have to come or it got ran story. over. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways. We can't, got off of that on meeting equipment. Yeah, yeah. the four, yeah. Like bringing the dogs cat, and yeah. 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 all those things. Yeah. All the things. <laughs> we even moved back to Monroe in that story. Uh, oh, okay. Anyways. So <laughs> we met. <laughs> you met apparently our entire crew. So you yep. met Morgan and all the dogs, uh, and so we we started our tenure in our at Quitman, and uh, we hated losing y'all um, because <laughs> we thought, man, these are really cool people. Like and. You left us. Uh, <laughs> seriously. Now, thankfully, y'all came back, and we reconnected, and, and friendship is, is flourishing. Yep. Um, I hope. Uh, <laughs> and so <laughs> we at least got, we got well, you maybe got you, got, you asked Morgan, and hey. I, I just got to tag along. Uh, she chose me as a plus one uh, to come do the podcast today. Uh, we started in Quitman, and I was the uh, youth and children's pastor there. Mm-hmm. And so small town, small church, you know, they tried to cobble together as many different ministries as possible to uh, make it a full-time job. And so we started there and um, things were, were going well. We bought a house and yeah, the expectation was we're going to settle down and be here. Uh, we got pregnant. Uh, we bought a car. Like uh, mm-hmm. we didn't build a picket fence, but we did build a, a fence in the back for <laughs> all the, the animals yeah. Yeah, nope. uh, in the back. And, you know, uh, we're uh, ministering to, to people and the, the student ministry is growing. The uh, children's ministry mm-hmm. is growing. Uh, we're starting to see some young families uh, in the church, um, which is something uh, Morgan and I have been blessed uh, to be a part of and, and a couple of churches that we've been a part of that um, we got a house and we could bring people over and uh, make friends. Um, or I make friends, then Mor- <laughs> <laughs> and then I bring he them home. He forces to Mo- me to make friends. <laughs> and I bring them home to Morgan. <laughs> 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 and that that's not right. that, that's not untrue. Uh, <laughs> yep, that feels there's right. Plenty of nights that we've got that I've come. I'm like home. we're hanging out with who? Like, wh- <laughs> wait, what? Just happened? Like, that's I, what happened when we first came over. Like, yeah, okay. Like, I met these guys. They're really cool. They're coming over for dinner tonight, which we got. And <laughs> what like, you cooking? Yeah, seriously. Morgan said, "Here's a mop. Here's a broom." I get in right. The or it really, it was like, why? Like, you could have me a day, a text, or something. <laughs> um, you know, in my mind. Like we got a couple of hours. That's that's more than enough time. <laughs> oh man! So uh, we actually have like this huge boom in our nursery um, where we've got like a dozen new babies, and mm-hmm. so like things seem to be going well. Well, uh, unfortunately, um, new families, uh, student life families, kid life families, nursery families—they don't necessarily pay the bills yep. uh, as far as tithing and offerings go in churches, and so we were seeing an increase in people but a decline in budget yep. and so um had our pastor uh come have a conversation with me on my birthday Ooh, i didn't know that part on my birthday um and into our uh we just started our third year there and said hey i hate to do this but looking at numbers we're going to have to let you go. Mm. Mm. And so that's a tough thing to hear Mm. (laughs) just at all. You know, like you, you've got a job and and you've got investment and you've got expectations. Um, and you, you've got just kind of general trust that, well, I'm going to be here. Yep. Um, and even more than just a, a regular job where you might have some good relationships with your coworkers in ministry, like relationships are key. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
And so you don't just have a relationship with your, your regulars that, you, you know, if you work in the food industry and you got this guy or this girl that comes in almost every day and it would, you, you would hate to leave that job and not see them again, you've got 100, 200, 300 people that you know that they know you and you share meals and broken bread and share tears and triumphs and, and trying to process well, what's next? Why? Why me? Why us? As a husband and as a father now, mm-hmm. as the, the provider for our family, and not just even provider for our family, uh, even though Morgan works, like, as you kind of said earlier, you, you kind of go as the, the minister goes to a different church, and you've got to be ready to pack up, but we weren't ready to pack up. It wasn't our choice. Yep. And so... It was devastating, and, and we've kind of worked through some of those emotions, and so if you don't hear the, the devastation in my voice, know that, that we, we've kind of worked through some of the things that, that we felt then. Uh, we're still aware of them now, um, mm-hmm. but it puts you in, in a logistically tough place, but even now that, like, feel like you're broken up with kind of, yeah. yeah. Um maybe to 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 try and put it in an emotional comparison but like maybe an engagement style yeah. uh relationship. I just remember it being really hard on me too because it was like these were the people who were around for the birth of our first child. These were, you know, these are the people. This is our first home. This is the home what we brought Maggie home to. Mm-hmm. Here she is. She's almost, you know, a year and a half at this point. Well, she's turning a year, I guess, when we get the news. Um, and so it was just like, you know, you, you just don't, you don't, you don't in your mind think this is the home we're starting our family in. We're, and it's just like, it's uprooted. Yeah. Um, and it's like, again, like, what do we do? Yeah, like, more than the career, like your home. Yeah. Yeah. And to make matters worse, and I, I know this wasn't necessarily where you were wanting to go, but this is the second straight time, second straight church experience that we had mm-hmm. that happened almost exactly alike. And God had called us to these churches. We, we were very confident yeah. in that, still confident in that. I think part of the reason why we were called to Quitman, if nothing else, was to meet y'all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which, you know, may be talked about as far as kind of where we are now. Um, and so at a previous church, kind of smaller um, in dynamic, but they cobbled together several ministries to make a full-time position, and God called us to it and um, kind of used our youthfulness and energy to rebuild some things that uh, had been vibrant in the past, and we were we were gaining some momentum in those areas, but budget just couldn't keep up, mm-hmm. and we were the sacrificial lamb. Um, and you know the the words were nice, like we hate that it's got to be like this, and we're sorry. Um, but the reality is. <laughs> uh, that it was happening and happening to us yep. yeah. and it was happening again. And so you start letting doubt and questions creep in, like what are we doing wrong? Mm. And not that we were perfect at either place, <laughs> um, but you start questioning your overall calling at times. Mm. And like, I was so confident in this calling and confident in this place and confident in what you wanted me to do for you and where I know that life isn't going to be easy, life isn't going to be simple, maybe a little bit of security would be nice. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even feel like we had that. Mm-mm. And so we start scrambling, you know. Um, you as us to Pearl. <laughs> we did. <laughs> uh, we, uh, you know, and I, I'll say this, uh, open and candid, as, as a minister and as a pre-K-4 teacher, we ain't rolling in it. Um, (laughs) and so we save what we can, um, to, to try and create margin. And, um, cause you guys had a little bit of like a heads up. It was a couple of months kind of, Hey, like this will be the end date. So it wasn't like, Hey, you're out in two. So yeah, the first one was you're, you're you're out, you're, um, it was like, I think a month and a half. Mm -hmm. Like they came to us in, uh, 
like mid-November and like um, at December, December 31st, your last day. Yeah. Wow. Um, And they gave us a two-week severance pay. Mm. And God had worked it out. That was like when that severance went up was when you were voted in. Yeah. At Quitman. Wow. Yeah. That's so, awesome. which yeah. and not not every not every church no. process of getting in no. is like that. No. Um, and I know we kind of do things differently here sure. at the exchange, but uh, in quote unquote normal traditional type churches, uh, the search committee process can take months. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so we were fortunate. God God set us up, um, and and so we're like, okay, He set us up for for success again. And so when it happened again, like. Wait, what? what? Right. <laughs> like, why this again? Like, okay, so it's going to work like that again. Like, it didn't work out, but God's got something for us. Mm-hmm. And in a way, he did, um, just not in the same timing <laughs> that we had before or that we thought, you yeah, know, that we had expected. Be. And so um, we start looking for any open positions in the state or in Alabama where Morgan is from or even back in Louisiana or, you know what, let's just cast a really broad net. Does anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> Does anyone need me? <laughs> um, and so uh, it just so happened that there was a, a position kind of sort of in under the radar. Rain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, coming available at yep. the exchange. And so I called my buddy Tyler. Yep. <laughs> um and uh, it started a conversation, started a process, like over here in Pearl at the exchange. And um, you know, it was interesting. It first started off as the kid life minister. Yeah, so it was like there were three different processes by the <laughs> yes. time this was all done. Yes. So I remember it, it was kids minister, mm-hmm. and I remember we like the first time we knew it was coming, but the first time our lead pastor Bryant was like, "All right, it's, it's probably time to start," you know whispering in people's ears and he hasn't been one to go drop it to like convention board because he he's connected in a lot of places yeah. so he tends to lean on contacts but i remember we were talking about it and i just went hey i i got a guy i mean he he's technically more students but he's done plenty of kids and mm-hmm. i know he's looking and it turned out you uh you had kind of rolled in some very similar circles had brushed elbows with Bryant and Heather while yeah. you were at MC. Do it like a Choctaw, man. Yeah, there you go. And then so that conversation kind of started. And then I don't even know if it was fully like said, hey, no, we're actually thinking about students for you instead. <laughs> I think it was just kind of like all of a sudden you went, wait, are, are we still talking about kids here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what, it was either one of the phone calls or one of the in-person meetings, uh, like the conversation. We were into the conversation and students was brought up and it was like, wait, what? I thought we were talking about kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep, yeah, and so uh, that one didn't actually play out the way it was expected to either. No, so, you know, we go through the process, and, you know, it's it's a part-time position at yeah. this point, and, you know, kids or students and um, time frame just didn't really work out. Mm-hmm. Well, in the meantime, because, you know, uh, it didn't go in two weeks like the, the <laughs> one from uh, Monroe to Quitman had done, um, we had actually already moved up here because unlike a student pastor position and yeah, there's ebbs and flows of maybe when more hires happen than others in in churches, Morgan as a teacher, there's a very small window. Yes. (laughs) Yes. In which uh, (laughs) teachers start their, their jobs. And so like uh, the summer happened and it's getting really close to time for Morgan. And I didn't have a job. And so we needed at least something. Right. (laughs) And, uh, and so we were looking back in Greenwood where my parents are and Decatur where your parents were. And uh, you had, I don't know how many resumes and applications Seriously, out there. Seriously, everywhere. Um, like it, you were kind of the same way, like just big nets. <laughs> Whatever Anybody. works. Yes, um, because we've got a child and we've got, you know, we, mortgage. Our house and equipment is still for sale. Anyone out there that needs a house, a good house, a good home. Uh, mm. We've One got you it for can sale. bring your first daughter home. To. One you That's can bring right, your first absolutely. daughter, or and your, your seventh daughter. How many ever? <laughs> Does not matter. Yeah, it's pet friendly. Uh, yeah, I, I'll go into why this house is your dream home. Uh, <laughs> And it's look, for selling. We will, like, and we will negotiate. If you want to make me an offer, we will negotiate right here, right now. Um, so and so good. it's still on the market over two years later. Yep. Wow. Um, and so we got fortunate. Morgan uh, got a position here in Pearl. And like, oh, well, that's that's a sign right there. You know, God has called us to Pearl. Um, and we moved here. We moved into my grandmother's house, uh, which we are still in because our house equipment is still in the market. And, you know, two mortgages. 
ain't us. Um, yep. We ain't living that kind of <laughs> life. Uh, maybe one day. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> and oh, we go through the process, and, and I, I get called in one day, and Brian says, not today. And yep. so I was like, well, that's three strikes. I'm out. <laughs> And, and that was tough, you know. Oh, yeah. I know, you know, it's, that's in the past, and we can kind of look back and, and joke and laugh and, and make a little light of it. But in that moment, that was really tough. Yeah. Oh, dude, I remember because I knew where the conversation was going that day. Like, I had to guard myself for a couple of weeks, honestly, because I'd already started to feel a little bit that it might be leaning that way. Mm. And I was like, oh, don't do this to my friend. Don't do this to my friend. <laughs> And then it happened, and I remember I shot you a text after, and I was just like, how are you? And you said, yeah. dude, I, I feel like I got hit by a truck or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And, and, and I did. Um, it, not that you, you think is a for sure thing, but, you know, uh, I, I think maybe it was more hopeful. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and, and also some desperation uh, in there as well. Uh, but also just some excitement because as we had come here and, and we got to know you guys and know the other staff and know the church and, like, really liked it here. yeah and so like yeah like please let us come aboard like we want to be a part of what y'all are doing here um because it's also very different uh in the context of how we do things here versus yeah. traditional church and you know i'm a, a pastor's kid so i've grown up in in church and, yeah. and, and it looks different here um uh, for for the right reasons right. i think uh and so i had to pivot mm. um because we still needed a job yep. yeah bank doesn't care <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, and so, I I I got a job the next week. Mm. No, I didn't. It, it was actually a couple of months before. Yeah, I it got was. A job. So here we are, living off of my part time yeah. pre K. It's not even a salary. My paycheck. Yep. Um And we're just watching our bank account like on the daily. Yep. All the because we're still paying mortgage. Yep. I mean, we're still living. You yep. know, like you've. Yeah. Wait, you guys kept eating during that uh, period? I know. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> that was irresponsible. Lots of ramen and bologna, <laughs> for real. Um, and, and you know, and, and not to not to go super dour, but there were there were days in which I did not eat a thing, mm. just because I did not know if we would have enough for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And so trying to, I mean, really rationing out. And so we were in a place where you know our faith is really solid. But we were being tested in a very real way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And though I, I wouldn't say we were perfect in that either, but I would, I would say, and, and I'll commend my wife in it, because it's one thing to go like, I'm called into this, and this is my mess, and I'm the reason why all these things are happening, and, you know, self-blame. And, but even though she was affected – by the emotion and the consequences, I got to tip my hat to my wife for maintaining her faith relationship with Jesus as well, maintaining her faith that God did have a plan and that where his timing (laughs) did not match ours or what we thought we needed, we maintained, we Mm -hmm. abided, Mm -hmm. and he did. Like, Mm -hmm. he came through. Um, we may have skipped a meal or two, but we had enough to feed at least our daughter and, and ourselves is what we needed and pay the bills that we needed to pay for until I was fortunate enough to come across a person that knew a person that called someone to get me a job. Mm-hmm. And that led to a time where it was a little easier. Um, It was paycheck to paycheck still, but we were able to not, I guess, feel so desperate or urgent. Um, And in that time, we, we maintained not only our faith, but our commitment to a faith body and uh, joined in to worship and serve at a church as, as, lay people um we also jumped in with you guys in your life group yeah and Mm -hmm. y'all's community and source of prayer for us for our attitudes and our hopefulness um 
enough can't be said in thankfulness and appreciation for, for, your, for you and your group during that season. Even now, like beyond that season, like we really appreciate it. Um, but uh, we really felt it then. And it was interesting, and I saw it kind of in hindsight, you know, we've heard no from the exchange, which we were, like, really, really, like, excited about, hopeful mm-hmm. about, like, this is going to work, like, this is this is why this ha- – like, mm-hmm. we, we were moved from the place that we thought was going to be a home because, look, like, look what we're about to be a part of. And when it didn't work out, I remember just feeling like <laughs> – like the wind knocked out of us mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. – not really know oh, well yeah exactly like what do we do now and so um the school where I was working was also the church that uh, Matthew's grandmother attends and so she invited us to start attending with her on Sundays very healthy church um and I I remember our first Sunday it was just like uh they saying I am who I say I am who you say I am and I just remember like both of us were like mm-hmm. undone at that point yeah. um and God really allowed um I, I I see it now in hindsight that was just a season of rest for us yeah. you know we obviously had a lot of um healing to do and to just like really rest in God's yeah. faithfulness and his and truly learn to trust him um and his provision and in his timing but just to be focused on him instead of like, where are we going? What are we doing? What's next? You know, what's the plan? Just to rest in him. Um, it was just a really healing season for us. Cause I think honestly, if we had jumped straight into the exchange, like I just don't think we would have been as healthy, mm. as mentally prepared, spiritually prepared than if we had not had that season of like where God said, wait, like, my answer's not yes. My answer's not no. My answer is wait. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can definitely see that purpose now in that period of like, well, yeah, now you have a job. It's not your calling. So I know you're not fully satisfied with what you're doing. But it's like, you know, where do we go from here? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I keep her around. She can articulate <laughs> uh, the feelings of things. Yeah, absolutely. That's the, well, well said. Yeah, so uh, you guys got a season of rest. It wasn't necessarily the season of rest you wanted. <laughs> no, or it wasn't like a sabbatical. And not, or yeah, not rest financially. No, <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. no. Yeah, it was still – there was plenty of stress to be felt mm-hmm. in the season. Yep. I have zero <laughs> yes. of that. We weren't sent to the Cayman Islands. for. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. I, I know we didn't experience it firsthand, but we, we were kind of walking near you guys, yeah. and so we saw it, and we know – but you got that season, and now uh, you work at the exchange. So <laughs> yep, I'm a janitor here happen? at the exchange. Okay. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm I'm working uh, at at my my nine to five. Yep. And I get a call the day after my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, like a year uh, after. Mm-hmm. So like we had walked an entire year. In in this mess, right? Wow. And and I'll, I'll just I'll that's a I think a PC enough word mess. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> well, this is yeah, that's right. Messy oh yeah, that's a ah, messy life. Yeah. Finger, yeah. It's like we thought through it. Finger guns. I, know, I thought that was intentional. <laughs> didn't plan that. that is not. But it's nice how things work out that way. <laughs> right. Uh, so the day after my birthday, so we'd walk through an entire year of this mess, and it is Pastor Brian. He said, "Hey." You want to talk? And, <laughs> and I don't know if I wanted to or not. Uh, like, no. <laughs> yeah, I got some things to say. <laughs> um, but, uh, mm. you know, Brian, Brian is who he is and, and can articulate things mm-hmm. so well. And so he said, yeah, uh, we're, we were headed um, out of town for a weekend. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and I said, we'll be back next week. Let's go to lunch. So we did, and I believe it was him and Josh Mm. uh, that came, and they basically laid out that they were offering me the position, but not just the student life position as a part-time job, which is what it was back in the summer, but now it was student life and mobilization, which is basically a fancy word for missions and Mm -hmm. outreach and things like that. Um, And... 
I tried to play it cool. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I'd think about it, and we left it at that. But inside, I was like, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Like, I'm actually, yes, yeah, I'll go pray about I'm it. I'm actually going to get in the car with you guys, and we're going <laughs> we back to work go. now. <laughs> You're going to start cutting that check. Yeah, I'm ready. Exactly. Oh, um, and so, man, I, af- after, you know, they left, Morgan was like, tell me everything they said. <laughs> And I want to play by play. <laughs> yep. Did man, you record it? <laughs> it was, it may have been one of the most joyful, relief giving conversations you and I have ever had because for, I don't know how many reasons, but we, we knew that this season was coming to an end, that we were going, like our calling was going to be put back on and that we had a place to serve. Mm. Mm. We were excited about the church family that we were going to get to be a part of um, and the way that you guys do things, um, the way you care about your people, the way that your staff interacts with one another. Yeah. We were, we were, we were pumped. And I, I think I even told Brian and Josh, like the next week, I need another week to think. (laughs) And I, <laughs> just because, stubborn. yes, and I don't know why. <laughs> um, I, I think maybe I was scared to tell my current boss I was leaving. <laughs> she, I don't know. I think part of me too was like, hold on, are we sure? Is this real? Is this real? Oh, are that, we sure? You know what? That may have been like some sort of subconscious, like because I very much myself. like I yeah. I like to test the waters. I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like right. we were told no before. Yeah, are we really sure? Is this the real thing? Are they really offering it to us? <laughs> like, do we say yes? And then it's like, oh, never mind. You know, I was, I yeah. was not skeptical, but I was wary of like, yeah. understand. Is this, is this a done deal? I, I need to know. Like, is yeah. this a done deal? Like, let's, let's, yeah, let's continue to talk about this. So, cut, we we eventually said yes. <laughs> eventually, you know, signed the contract, went through that process, and and here we are, and we're never leaving. So, yeah, <laughs> we're okay with that. <laughs> we are a okay with you guys being here. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So, what a journey. Ooh, man. Yeah. And only in a like a year's time. Like I didn't realize. Like that's a long time. But then again, it was like, wow, what happened in a short time? Yeah. Yep. It was not the fastest year of our no. lives. I can no. only imagine. Yeah. All right. So I want one biggest takeaway from the whole unexpected life things coming out of left field season. Just one biggest takeaway each. From from that season? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I really think that um, – I don't know. I feel like in that season God truly showed me what it meant to trust him and not to just say you trust him like when things are going smoothly and your five-year plan is working out perfectly and to really drive home like you need me you think may think you need all these other things but as long as I have Jesus everything else is secondary and really tested me on that because yeah. it's it's easy to say, yeah, I, I only need Jesus when you've got your, you know, four bedroom house, you know, you're at home and you're not having to share one room <laughs> with four people. Mm. <laughs> um, and so I think my biggest takeaway is. I don't know. I mean, I would have never chosen that for myself ever. But looking back now, I don't think I would honestly change anything um, because it just showed me how God is faithful through all circumstances um, and that he's he's got it all. So mm-hmm. I've got to let go of what I, I think I have control of because yeah. I don't actually have control of it. Like, okay, God, you've shown me that. Um, and to just trust him and know that he is... Even though if I can't see it, he's going to work all things for our good. It's mm, good stuff. Preach. Stole my answer. No. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that was that was, that was good. Uh, maybe in the same vein, 
to focus on the dependence of him versus the details of your life. Um, I think there was a, a, a time in which, not that I was not dependent on him, but I may have treated it as we're walking step in step. Mm. Like, thanks for the setup, God. I'll take it from here. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, as, as, a, as a pastor, and would give like verbally credit to him, but probably act in a way that, okay, I, I'll, I appreciate the gifts. I appreciate the platform. I'm going to go use those, mm. but separately from him. For him, but separately from him. And I know it's kind of subtle, but it's a significant um, difference there. Yep. And that was all stripped away. <laughs> and there was... There Even was, your calling. Yeah. To be in ministry. Yeah. And so the details were wiped, and it was a grab your face, <laughs> look at me kind of dependence moment. And I hope... <laughs> You know, uh, that that's, that's something that remains. It definitely uh, made it spark for sure. And I think another thing, like another takeaway too, um, for those of you that haven't gleaned, we're still living in the one bedroom apartment <laughs> uh, two years now. And we went from three to four in that apartment. So it's literally me and Matthew and our three-year-old Maggie Bell and our almost 11 month old Margo, Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're in a one bedroom apartment and I think God has still, I I don't know. I've, I've just gained a sense of just counting your blessings. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there are so many things that we just take for granted. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get married and we're going to buy a house and we're going to live here as long as we want. And we're going to have these things and our needs are going to be met and our, even our wants are going to be met. And, you know, now when, whenever our house and equipment can sell, we'll sell future buyer out there somewhere. Um, <laughs> you know, we've, you know, entertained ourselves by looking at houses and things like that. And I'm like, dude, I don't care if it's like, you know, <laughs> a, a thousand square feet. It's got walls, you know, it's got, it's got <laughs> doors, you know, just a sense of like counting your blessings and not taking things for granted yeah. because we totally, I feel like, took so many things for granted that now it's like, that's like a luxury, you know. And and we even, what our situation now, we have it so much better than so many people. Um, and to just not ever, you know, take those things for granted. To just yeah. literally be thankful that you have air conditioning and, you know, that you have a bed to sleep in um, yeah. and that it doesn't matter what it looks like. Those are still, that is still God supplying your needs yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. and it may not be your dream home. God, you know? And also quick shout out to Myrna Hayes. Thank you. Mamaw. Ooh, Mamaw, Mamaw. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think many people can listen to this podcast and be at completely different places in their lives from y- y'all, see- yeah. y'all circumstance and season. And um, I think the whole takeaway here is to trust in the Lord. Yeah. Um, his plan is the plan, yeah. the ultimate plan. And it's all for his glory and for his good. And, um, Amen. and, and it's for, uh, for him, but that, that might mean we have to live a different way for a while. Yeah. Or, uh, sacrifice some things. And, um, yeah. So thanks for sharing your story today and, um, giving us a little glimpse into the the Stevens. So um, we always like to end on this question. What is something messy in your life right now that you were loving? You want me to go? Sure. All right. Something messy. Um, mm, I'm going to steal uh, this. You're talking about our one, not one bedroom, one room apartment. So we are enclosed in just a few square feet um, in which you can see everything, <laughs> uh, but you can also see everyone. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, we, we have two small children and you hear from people farther along, grandparents or others, you know, cherish these moments. Mm-hmm. We get to witness every one of the moments <laughs> <laughs> Whether you want to or yes, not. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, whatever's closer than uh, front row. <laughs> well, we are on the court. Uh, yes. 
but we see everything. All of us get to see everything. I, Morgan's not calling me in to, hey, Matthew, come see. You know, Morgan's taking her step, or <laughs> Maggie just <laughs> biffed it doing something. Um, no, we're we're all in there together, and it's messy. Mm. Yes, and it is. And with two small girls, it's actually messy. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> and so there's lots. Like we clean. I feel like multiple times a day just to just to have space to walk across right, the floor. Right. Yes. But I, being in it, mm. I don't know that I could sell this to somebody. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but being in it. I don't know that I would change it. Mm. Mm. Now we're just, we're going to buy a house. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll change it later. But right now, mm. I don't know that you know later in life if I could go back and do things. To, this is an awesome period of time that we get to watch our girls grow up and interact and interact with us, and we interact with them. We get to interact with one another. Um, there's no, like, you know, you get mad and you go to the other room. Like, you know, like, even, like, those moments, the, the heated fellowship, like, it's all done in real time yeah. <laughs> right then and there. Um, but it's, it, it's, it's been a, a, a pressure cooker, and, and I think the meal that is coming out is, is good and it's delicious, mm-hmm. and we're enjoying it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. I like that. Morgan? Um, if you know anything about the season of life that everyone is in right now, everything's messy due yeah. to yes. uh, right. COVID and, you know, being What's an, this? What? COVID. I know, right? <laughs> what? Um, being <laughs> an educator in COVID Ooh. is messy. All of it's messy right now. But I think, again, what I love so much about this age group is it hasn't reached them yet. And so we're still adjusting, like, they wear their mask and they don't think anything of it, you know, and they uh, they think it's cool that they get to wear one and, you know, they... Halloween every day. Right, like, they get to show off the different colors there are and everything, but just how it's messy, like, mm-hmm. it is messy right now in the trenches um, trying to educate during this time, but also just, you know, a sense of normalcy for these kids, too, of, like, hey, like, we're at school... Like, we're going to have fun, we're going to love each other, and we're going to kind of forget everything that's going on on the outside while we're here. Mm. Um, And just not letting that permeate the classroom. Like, this is our safe space. You know, we still have joy here. Mm. Awesome. I love it. Thank you guys again for sharing your journey with us, for sitting down and recording this. Um, We always love spending time with the Stevens, and that will likely be reflected in this episode length. Um, I haven't looked at the exact time, but I know we've chatted for for a good minute. Yeah, sorry, not sorry. Thanks for listening. So much more I could have shared. Oh gosh, absolutely. Yes, I mean, (laughs) you've probably listened to this in numerous segments as you've started and stopped, and we super appreciate the fact that you did that. So here's what I need from you. I need you to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Make sure you subscribe. That way you will see every single time we drop a new episode. Give us a like. Share us with all your friends. Write a review talking about how much you love listening to me being Matthew McConaughey. (laughs) Um, I know. It's it's all all right. Um, Thank you guys for hanging in and walking in this podcasting journey with us. And we will see you again soon.